In my previous video, I debunked the moon being a rock. Now I will debunk stars and planets being rocks. Let's begin with this image. On the foreground you see planet Earth and on the background a freeze frame. Freeze frame of a night sky turning on its axis. Center, right and left view. Compare that with a photograph of a ball in the mirror. Of course, because we are situated on the ball, we will only see a part of the reflection. So, we have a double reflection. The moon is the total image and the stars are a closer detailed reflection. So if I'm right, the star map will fit exactly on the moon map. Thus they are both the reflection of Earth. So when I looked at the star map, I decided to take Orion as my anchor point. And the main reason is the two times three points. So I took a plastic foil and I copied the silhouette on it. After looking a few days, I found a match. I'll show you where. It was exactly where I suspected it, in the tape. There it is. The only problem was that the two times three points were fitting but the four corners were slightly deviating. That might be due to the reflection on the plasma ball. Of course, I have a starting point now, but I need some more proof. But what I did notice, to my surprise, is that Orion was close to the Milky Way, and the place of my Orion was near a ridge. So I suspected that the reflection of the ridge is actually the Milky Way. So let's look again at the pictures of the freeze frame of the nighttime sky and think of it as a reflection of Earth aka the Moon with a giant rock formation on the side from bottom to top. So, from this point, I will search further for some more clues. Near the star system of Orion, you have the star system of Taurus. Well, you have a lot of craters there, but which one to choose? That's difficult to tell. But then I saw this picture, the sign of Taurus and in the horns you have the Crab Nebula. And I had noticed on the surface of the moon a very strange anomaly, a very strange form. It almost looked like a crab. So I found these Hollywood scientific pictures too good to be true. So I decided to quit the Hollywood science fiction scene and look for some amateur images. These images aren't tampered with. So I found this one and I put the two images next to each other. Play a little bit with the levels in Photoshop and you get this result. So next you have Orion, Taurus and the Crab Nebula and on the right of Taurus you have the Pleiades. So the distance between Orion, Taurus and the Pleiades is approximately the same. So it was fairly easy to find it. So I take a close up of it and put a photograph of an amateur next to it. So we got Orion the Crab Nebula and the Pleiades. So what's next? Well, on the left there, 
you have Saturn. That would be interesting to find a planet. So let's move up from the Pleiades. Well, that looks like an interesting crater. I can almost see Saturn from the top. But how on earth could this reflect in this form? Stuck again. So at that point I decided to make a 3D model. It's a crater in a crater and at the bottom a bowl. Let me show you the result. Okay, let's put some light in it. I would say Eureka! Here is your planet. The bottom bowl is forming a light bowl. And the two craters are forming the rings round Saturn. I don't know about you, but that really knocks me off my chair. So let's move on. Next in line would be Sirius, a very important star, easy to find. So if you take the three little stars of Orion, approximately five times to the left, you find Sirius. Sirius was a very important star for the Egyptians. By observing Sirius, they could predict the movements of the Nile. So, let's take the three little stars and move to the left. Damn! Or maybe it's another one, a bit deeper. This one is called Sulpicius Gallus M. Or this one, this one is even bigger. Let's go back to the small one. So I found this picture of Sirius. Play a little bit with the levels, so you get this. So I cut up the continents and I played a little bit. Still no proof, of course, but we're getting close. But then I got a lucky break again. I found this picture. Especially the two at the bottom. This is mind blowing. Take a look at the entrance and the two sidebars. The two notches at the side and the center point. The same for here. The entrance, the core point and the two notches at the side. So now I can say that Sulpicius Hallus M is serious and probably our biosphere. You can also see some smaller craters that might be Sirius A, B and C. You can also see there is a passage. Antarctica is the doorway to the bigger Earth. I also have to admit I made a mistake in my previous videos. I stated that Polaris was planet Earth. So I have to take that back, sorry. So now I know where Sirius is, I can start making triangles. The left star of the Orion constellation is called Betelgeuse. Here you see a picture. So when you make a triangle with Betelgeuse and Sirius, you get Procyon. So you have the gateway the center and the sidebar. So now we have Procyon, we can find Mars. Let's zoom in. Here is the close up and with a photograph next to it. You can see the polar cap. 
observe the snake-like line lying next to Mars? I think that's responsible for the snake-like shadow on the ball. Here you have the Barnard Nebula. Here we have Sirius and the Seagull Nebula. So, what are galaxies? When you look closely, it's like a moon crater seen from the side. If you flip this one over, you would have a galaxy. And why spiraling? That's because of the movement of Earth. So, that's as far as I got. I don't know about you, but I have enough evidence to believe that we're on a bigger ball. Of course, there will always be people who will deny it. If we were in the Middle Ages, I would be on the fire stack now, burning alive. When I see the reactions on my previous video, I think we're in deep trouble. Thanks for watching.